Welcome to this short video course on how and when to go agile with training design and development. Please subscribe to our channel to get notified when we release new educational videos. In the e-learning industry, ADI is the most adopted approach to managing training design and development. The ADI model is equivalent to the waterfall model followed in software development. The ADI model follows a linear approach. Agile is the buzzword and the most adopted project management method in the software industry. The successive approximation model, or the SAM model attempts to make the training design and development process more agile. However, owing to the nature of work in the e-learning industry, we cannot go agile with our project management for each course that we are developing. The details of the SAM model or the agile project management methodologies are out of scope for this video, but we'll briefly discuss these concepts. By the end of this video, you will be able to Define Agile and Waterfall Project Management Methods Identify the difference between these two methods Explain the successive approximation model Determine the ideal project management method for managing the development of your courses The traditional method of product development follows a waterfall model The diagram here summarizes the waterfall approach wherein you gather requirements then move to design, then move to implementation, testing, making updates, and then maintain the product if needed. That is after you analyze and design the product features, you develop a version of the complete product. Such an approach is called waterfall because it's linear and flows in one direction as waterfalls do. The external, or at times internal stakeholders, don't get a chance to look at the product until it's delivered. Agile project management is a methodology that recommends developing projects in an iterative way. In agile project management, you gradually add all features to the product by constantly updating it based on feedback received for each iteration. The diagram shown here summarizes the agile approach wherein you analyze, plan, define the scope, design prototypes, develop, test, and deploy within a single iteration. Instead of designing and delivering a complete product, you deliver small iterations of the product while meeting the minimum quality and functional requirements with each iteration. That is, you should deliver a minimum viable product that offers the functionality or service which your customers can use. You continue this loop until the product meets all the functional and quality requirements. For example, let's say you need to design and deliver a new course that would teach learners how to host meetings effectively. Next, Let's say you have five modules or lessons in this course. So, with the Agile approach, you can consider developing the first module of the course, getting an initial iteration reviewed by your team or subject matter experts, updating it, and then delivering the next iteration until you all agree on a version, which will achieve the learning goal. Now, you move on to the next module and repeat this process until the course is finalized. In most cases, the e-learning or learning and development industry has been traditionally following the ADI model for designing and developing courseware. This model is great, robust, and offers a logical approach to training design and development. As we have seen from the number of effective courses we've developed using the ADI model, this approach works. However, when we don't have clarity on the scope of the training, or when we are developing a course on a complex topic, we tend to require more revisions to the course content during development. This model is also linear like the waterfall model. This is where the ADI model tends to lack flexibility. The SAM model manages to address this shortcoming and provides an agile framework for developing courses. With the SAM model, you gather the required information or receive the raw content from a subject matter expert or SME, you start designing your course. However, you don't develop the complete training design in one go. You are recommended to create a draft design for the course and then discuss it with your team or the SME. Next, based on the feedback, you continually update it until you agree to a version that aligns with your training and business goal. You can download a sample design document here. Next, based on the design, start developing the slides, screens, and content. Define milestones in your development cycle when you meet with your team or SME to review the iterations. Next, update the content based on the feedback. Again, review the iteration and continue updating until you and stakeholders agree that the training is effective and will achieve its learning and business goals. 
To ensure such iterative cycles are not infinite, you can define the number of iterations that you will develop and evaluate. This is because we work in environments that require us to constantly deliver solutions. These training solutions should be good enough as far as the content and design are concerned. An aim to deliver the perfect course with innumerable iterations could lead to business challenges. When to use Agile You are recommended to use Agile methods to manage your course development if you are in situations such as those discussed here. If SME or a team is available to review and iterate with you, effective course development is typically a team effort. Unless you are an expert on the topic of the course, you will need to collaborate with SMEs or a team to design and develop an effective course. So, when you go agile for developing a course, you will need to ensure that your SMEs or the team is aware and available to review and iterate the different versions of the course with you. When the scope is loose or undefined, as Steve Jobs said, people don't know what they want until you show it to them. So, if you are developing a course that sails into the unknown domain of content, technicalities, or innovative interactions, consider going agile. If you don't have a defined scope at the start of a course, being agile will give you the freedom to keep checking regularly whether you're developing the course with the right content, design, and interactions. If budget and timelines are flexible, with an aim to create a perfect course, agile iterations can continue beyond your planned dates. As a result, being agile can increase the budget and the timelines. Hence, when you adopt the Agile methodologies, be flexible with your budget and timelines to accommodate the additional iterations. When you have less or no reference content, good quality reference content enables us to learn the content of a course ourselves before we teach it via the courses that we write. If you don't have access to quality reference content, consider going Agile. Write the draft outline of your course structure, get an approval from your SME, then create the design of your course. Next, take a modular approach to writing content and iterate with your SME and team until you have an effective course ready. When you are making a gamified innovative course, if you and your team are trying to build a course that uses advanced gamification or complex delivery methods, go agile. Iterate on the learner experience by testing the experience with a sample of your target audience. Get their feedback and update your designs and content. When to use waterfall methodologies. Traditional ADI or any other waterfall methods for developing courses are recommended when you need to. Team or SME has limited availability for reviews and collaboration. Going agile requires collaboration with others that could be SMEs or your team. If they are not available to review and iterate with you, it will be difficult to be agile. Develop a course with a well-defined scope. This means that if you have clarity around the business goals, learning objectives, and content outline for the course, you may not need to go agile with your development. However, on the contrary, if you are trying new designs or need assurance on the accuracy of certain parts of the course, you can consider a hybrid model. That is, adopt waterfall for the entire project, but be agile with parts of the course that require iteration and reviews. Budget and timelines are fixed. Projects developed with Agile methodology can have a scope creep, hence may need flexible timelines and budget. So, if you have a fixed budget and a hard timeline, you should stick to managing your project with waterfall methodology. Develop a course that has good reference content. If you have reliable source content and understand the scope and content well, you can stick to the waterfall model. Update an existing course. This is because the projects in which you are updating an existing course will have a clearly defined scope. Going agile in such cases won't make sense as your first iteration itself will meet the update requirements. Here is a summary of when is it recommended to go agile versus using waterfall. You can pause the video and examine this comparison at your own pace. So, to summarize, we can say that we don't have one best way to develop courses. However, being aware of your project's needs, scope, and development environment can help you to determine whether you need to manage your project with waterfall or agile methodologies. Thanks for watching the video. Do subscribe to our channel to stay updated with new releases from us.